So, let us now consider some examples of real systems showing ordered compounds and phase separation. And these as you can note are isomorphous systems and have either what you might call a depression in the melting point as in the top left example, which is the nice model system of gold nickel. On the right hand side we have the gold platinum system, uh, which shows phase separation and also we have the gold palladium system, in which you can actually see three intermetallic compounds, which form the AU 3 P D, the AU P D 3 and the AU equimolar AU P D compound. Straight away let us start of course, with uh, the first example with the depression in the melting point system, gold nickel system. You notice that at the peak of this splitting occurs, that means first of all of course, you have liquid phase at high temperatures, at lower temperatures you have an uniform solid solution alpha forming over a range of temperatures. And if you cool the system even further, it shows a phase separation into alpha 1 and alpha 2. Since gold and nickel both have FCC structure, therefore, alpha, alpha 1 and alpha 2 all of them are FCC structures. Similarly, in the gold platinum system on the right hand side, again you can note that both are noble metals and having FCC structure. You have a phase separation at low temperatures and you have the isomorphous diagram, which looks which is considerable deviation from the ideal kind of a double lens system, which we had drawn before. So, there is as you can see there are considerable non idealities when you consider real systems. On the right hand side bottom you can see actually uh, and this arrow of course, does not point to system here, this is an independent system it is a micrograph in which we are able to see a two phase system. This is the aluminum chromium iron nickel alloy with two phases and which has a composition of aluminum approximately 28 percent, chromium 27 percent, iron 24 percent and nickel 19 percent, in which there are two phases which form which separate out which is the BCC and B 2 phases, B 2 being the ordered version of BCC. So, you can actually clearly see there are two phases the dark phase which has been etched out and the light phase white phase both of which contain the all these four alloying elements, but then they have separated out. And the B 2 phase we expect to be rich in aluminum because aluminum is an along with nickel is a nice compound former. Now, uh, therefore, we have a nice micrograph here in which case there was an uniform solid solution at high temperatures, which when cooled actually split into two um, phases the BCC phase and the B 2 phase and this kind of a decomposition is called a spinodal decomposition. Now, coming to the compound formation system, which we see here on the left hand side, you have a liquid at high temperatures and you have an isomorphous kind of a system with an elevation in the uh, melting point. That means that such a system will show a or tendency for ordering is expected to show a tendency for ordering and we see three ordered compounds one uh, ordering reaction at 850 degree Celsius, other at 870 and third is 100 degree Celsius and there are three compounds forming of gold and palladium. Suppose, um, I look at a compound which forms close to the equimolar composition of 50 50. The important point to note that unlike uh, what you might call valence compounds, these compounds exist over a range of composition. So, it is not just the gold palladium, palladium uh, gold 50 50 alloy which forms the uh, interim uh, immediate compound, but the range of composition as you can see from this diagram, which all show formation of a compound. Of course, uh, these compounds would either would imply that to accommodate this off stoichiometry often either there is a vacancy known as the sub lattices or there is an anti side defect, which can accommodate this off stoichiometry. So, we have seen three examples of real systems, which now have a tendency for either phase separation or compound formation. Now, let us take up another interesting example, the example of titanium zirconium and in this titanium zirconium system, the interesting point is that we had mentioned that there are solid state analogs of various reactions. Like if you have the eutectic reaction, we have the eutectoid reaction. Now, you are talking about the titanium zirconium system here and in this system both titanium and zirconium both HCP uh, crystal structures and you notice that at high temperatures there is liquid, at low temperatures there is when you cool and the liquid you form a BCC phase of beta titanium in solid solution with beta zirconium both of them being BCC, but even lower temperatures you find that you have the natural external close pack structure room temperature stable structures forming. And this transformation at high temperatures is the liquid to 
So, this is the liquid to beta structure or the BCC structure phase transformation which is uh, what you might call uh, the iso classical isomorphous system, but at lower temperatures again you see another kind of an isomorphous looking diagram, but now you should note that this is completely a solid state phase transformation. That means, you have now the solid solution of beta titanium and beta zirconium transforming to alpha titanium and alpha zirconium. Therefore, if you are looking at the two phase field like you are looking at the two phase field here, what exists is not a mixture of liquid and solid phases, but a mixture of the high temperature form of titanium and zirconium coexisting with the low temperature form of a solid solution of titanium and zirconium which is labeled the alpha titanium and zirconium. So, in this single diagram which is a nice illustrative example, not only do you see a depression in freezing point as you would expect, but at lower temperature you see the solid state analog of the isomorphous transformation. So, this is a nice example to be considered when you are talking about examples of phase di uh, isomorphous systems. And if you we had noted that if you look at a composition say for instance in this example of about 50 percent of zirconium composition at 1537 degrees Celsius, we noted that such a composition will melt at a single temperature akin to a pure metal. That means, we call this a congruent melting composition. So, this 50 percent uh, zirconium alloy is a congruent melting composition and we had noted the degrees of freedom for at this composition and this temperature is 0 and such a system would melt like a pure metal. What are the other congruent transformations we list here? We already seen two of them the melting point maximum, the melting point minimum and we will we also seen the order disorder transformation which if you look carefully which we will go back to the previous slide and notice one more is also can occur take place at a single temperature and also the formation of an intermediate phase. So, <coughs> now suppose you are talking about an order disorder transformation then you would note that this transformation for compositions which are of 50 50 take place for instance over a range of temperatures here, but for this composition it takes place at a single temperature. So, let me draw this on the board. So, you have an ordering reaction taking place say for instance now this is my composition axis and this is my temperature axis. And say now let me arbitrarily take this to be 50 percent of an element and I take my. So, if you see take any composition to the right or left of this 50 percent then the order disorder transformation will take place over a range of temperatures. But suppose I take this precise composition will lies at the maximum, then this composition would show a congruent order disorder transformation. So, this is this precise composition and we can label this point P which shows an order disorder congruent transformation. Next we consider a special kind of a phase diagram the eutectic phase diagram. In the eutectic phase diagram we will note that there is something known as a eutectic reaction and we need to consider this because very few systems actually exhibit the isomorphous phase diagram and usually the solid solubility of one component in other is limited. That means, we are not in the regime of humoro 3 and therefore, we typically see that there are other kind of trans, uh, phase diagrams which exist. Um, and often the solid solubility could be severely limited and we will take up some examples of these also. Those truly speaking the solid solubility is never 0. Sometimes when you look at phase diagrams, it uh, when the solid solubility is very small, uh, they will um, not show it in the phase diagram. It will be seem as if the solid solubility or the terminal solid solubility is 0, but due to entropic reasons we know that it can never truly be 0 and there will be some small amount of solubility which exists typically. In a simple eutectic system and we consider now binary eutectics for now, 
there is one composition at which the liquid freezes to two solids at a single temperature. This is another congruent what you might call melting temperature or the eutectic reaction is another congruent uh, kind of a reaction. In some sense this is similar to a pure solid which freezes as a single temperature. Of course, um, unlike like a pure substance the freezing produces two solids phases both of which contain both the components. If you talk about a pure element melting for instance or a pure component melting then this will take place at a single temperature on cooling the liquid produces a single solid of a single composition. But now when you are talking about this eutectic reaction here though the solidification takes place at a single temperature two compositions of the solid are produced which we will see from the phase diagram. The term eutectic is used to tell us that it is means easy melting that means uh, and we will see this from the phase diagram that if the melting point of the solid is typically lower than both the components. And this can be used to advantage for instance uh, in the lead tin system uh, and when you say lead tin system actually we are talking about um, not pure lead and pure tin, but solid solutions of, uh, of tin in lead and lead in tin. If you talk about this eutectic alloy it melts at 183 degree Celsius which is lower than the melting points of both lead, lead melts at 327 degree Celsius and tin melts at 232 but the eutectic composition melts at 183 degrees which is lower than both the components lead and tin. This is uh, very nice because now we can make a solder alloy of the eutectic composition and therefore, we will have to input least amount of heat to melt the solder material and therefore, we can use it for soldering using a temperature which is smaller and therefore, the uh, heating the electronic components need uh, we need not worry about it. So, we want to input least amount of heat into, this, uh, into the solder of the two materials and this eutectic composition helps us in doing so. And um, we will take up a few examples of this eutectic uh, system and we will see what is the importance of this. And we have already noted that the components not only need the elements like in the previous example in the lead tin system both the components were uh, elements, but uh, it they can be other uh, kind of eutectic reactions. For instance, in the Al2 Cu uh, system the alpha that is copper solid solution of aluminum shows a eutectic reaction with the theta phase which is the Al2 Cu phase. That means, one side is a solid solution alpha or essentially aluminum and the other side is a theta phase which is Al2 Cu and between these com this compound and this solid solution we have an eutectic reaction. So, let us start with the simple example of an lead tin eutectic system. So, if you on the left hand side lead melts at 327 degree Celsius, on the right hand side tin melts at 232 degree Celsius, but there is a specific composition which we call C eutectic C subscript T e, with 62 percent of tin which melts at 183 degree Celsius. And you can see that on the right hand side the melting point or which we call the liquidus line, the liquidus line slopes down towards the eutectic temperature of 183. On the right hand side similarly the liquidus line slopes from 230 to 183 degree Celsius and similarly the liquidus line also slopes downward. And at 183 degree Celsius we have a reaction known as the eutectic reaction in which case a liquid of a certain composition gives rise to two solids alpha and beta. This alpha on the left hand side and beta on the left right hand side are what are, what are called terminal solid solutions. they are both terminal solid solutions and we will later on take up examples where the solid uh, terminal solid solubility is actually very very limited. So, now we have an for 62 percent of tin a reaction of a liquid giving two solids alpha and beta and all this happening at a single temperature. Of course, we will have to ask ourselves this question suppose I am working an off eutectic composition for instance I am working at a composition with 50 percent of tin or I am working at a composition which is below having a composition of tin below the point D. So, D is 18 percent. So, if I am working at a composition with 10 percent of tin 
how will be the solidification behavior of such an alloy. So, these kind of questions we will ask ourselves and we will try to address these that what kind of typical microstructures are produced when you are talking about these off eutectic compositions. So, I am taking under suppose I am taking an off eutectic composition here, I would like to know what is the solidification behavior of an off eutectic composition. Now, if you want to write down this eutectic reaction, which now I pointed out takes place for compositions between the point D with 18 percent uh, of tin and F, which is what you might call uh, the terminal point till which I would see an eutectic reaction, I would observe a eutectic reaction and the, the point where the reaction is completely dominating the whole transformation is the point with 62 percent of tin. So, I, I can write down the eutectic reaction in complete form as and this is the proper way to write the reaction as shown in the equation below that a liquid with 62 percent tin when cooled and this double headed arrow means that it at 183 degrees Celsius there is actually an equilibrium and in the cooling direction I would produce alpha and beta two phases. Alpha has is a solid solution of tin and lead and this alpha contains 18 percent tin. Beta is also a solid solution of tin and lead and this contains 97 percent tin and I have labeled these as C beta eutectic, C alpha eutectic and C eutectic and this reaction occurs at 183 degrees Celsius. So, when I am writing a eutectic reaction, the proper way of writing this reaction is that I would include the cooling direction, I would include the temperature at which the transformation is taking place, I would include all the compositions that means the composition of the liquid and the compositions of the alpha and beta which rise from this eutectic reaction. So, I have these two terminal solid solutions which I can mark on the right hand left hand side here. So, this is my terminal solid solution on both sides the alpha and beta and beyond this you have the eutectic reaction. The bounding line on the lower side the blue line is called the solvus line and the solvus line separates the alpha phase from the alpha plus beta phase on the left hand side and on the right hand side the solvus line this is so this F tin line the line here. So, which I will highlight once more. So, this line starting from F this line starting from F and going downward is also another solvus line and this solvus line separates the beta phase from the alpha plus beta phases. This kind of a sol uh, solvus line is called a sloping solvus line that implies that if you look at the solubility possible of uh, for instance tin in lead at, at a high temperature for instance suppose I am here in this temperature and I call this temperature T 1 I would notice that there is a large amount of solubility of tin in lead possible. Suppose I go down to lower temperatures I will see that the solubility keeps falling. So, let us let me show this solvus line in a little more detail on the uh, board. So, what I am going to draw here is what is called the sloping solvus line. So, I have a percentage of B on the x axis and I have temperature on the y axis and I have a line which is called the sloping solvus line and this sloping solvus line so I have the solvus line and now of course, it could be terminated in what we may call a eutectic reaction there, but suppose I am tracking my solubility at a temperature T 1 and at a lower temperature for instance T 2 and even lower temperature T 3. you would notice that at T 1 this much amount of solid solubility is possible of B in A. So, this is my A at lower temperature the solubility keeps falling and this is why I call this a sloping solvus line. That means, suppose I were at a, I take a composition like this here which I label for instance C 1 and I slowly cool from here I would notice when I cross this line here this intersection to this line this uniform solid solution of say A in B say for instance the alpha solid solution would break down into an alpha plus beta. So, that means an alpha here would break down into an alpha plus beta mixture this is because of the reducing solubility with decreasing temperature.
So, in addition to the previously known lines the liquidus line and the solidus lines which we encountered while we talked about the isomorphous system, we have an additional line to talk about here in the phase diagram which is called the solvus line. And to summarize the most important point in this diagram that there is liquid at high temperatures, but then that breaks down into two phases alpha and beta at low temperatures. And for a fixed composition 62 percent in this example at point E which I label the eutectic point this whole transformation takes place at a single temperature. And between all the single phase regions the liquid region, the alpha region and the beta region you have all the two phase regions the liquid plus beta region, the alpha plus liquid region and the alpha plus beta region. And as I pointed out before we need to note the following points when you are talking about an isomorphous phase diagrams that alpha and beta are terminal solid solutions that means that alpha is a solid solution of B in A and similarly beta is A in B and in some systems the terminal solid solubility may be very very limited and we will consider these examples in the coming slides. Alpha has the same crystal structure as A for instance the crystal structure of lead in the left hand side, beta has the same crystal structure as B tin in the right hand side. Typically in eutectic systems the solid solubility increases with temperature till the eutectic points that means that we have the sloping solvus line about which we just talked a little bit. And we have to note that in the case of a eutectic phase diagram we have to note that there are three important lines the liquid is marked in red, the solid is marked in green and the solvus line which is marked in blue. And uh, there are three uh, such lines to the left of the eutectic we have the liquid as solid as and the solvus and similarly to the right we have the of the eutectic point also we have the liquid as solid as and the solvus lines. And in the diagram in the night, we, uh, right hand side we can note that the single phase regions are all marked the liquid region, the alpha region and the beta region and all the other regions in white are the two phase mixture regions. Now we have already noted that at the eutectic point there are three phases coexisting the liquid phase, the alpha phase and the beta phase all three of them coexist at the uh, what you may call the eutectic point and this implies according to the phase rule that the number of degrees of freedom is 0. And since that, that automatically implies that the temperature and composition <coughs> at which the eutectic reaction occurs for a given system of course, uh, the actual composition and temperature will be dependent on the system for instance in the lead tin system this may occur at a certain composition in certain other system it will occur at a different temperature and composition. But for a given system the temperature and composition at which the eutectic point occurs is absolutely fixed that means it is an invariant of the phase diagram. And we have to additionally note that in a binary system the d f line the line d joining f the temperature of the eutectic reaction is an horizontal line. That means, you cannot allow this line to tilt because the degrees of freedom along this line is fixed. Any composition between d and f will show at least in part an eutectic solidification. This aspect we will consider in detail in the coming slide. What we have to note though we have a very particular composition E at which the entire liquid shows an eutectic reaction, but this does not imply that there are not other composition which will at least show eutectic reaction in part. And what we are saying is that if you take a composition between D and E or between E and F such compositions will also show eutectic reaction, but that will be only part of the liquid which will show the eutectic reaction. The entire liquid will not undergo the eutectic reaction and we will see the reason for that very soon. Now the percentage of alpha and beta produced by the eutectic uh, solidification at E can be found out by considering D F as a lever with fulcrum at E. That means, I can put my fulcrum at E and now I have two sections to this lever D E and E F and I can use my lever rule to actually calculate the phase fractions. That means, suppose I want to know the amount of uh, the alpha phase in this reaction then I will take the section E F and divide it by the total length of the lever D F. So, so the alpha phase fraction of the alpha phase is equal to the arm of the lever E f divided the opposite arm of the lever divided by D f. Of course, I will have to express this in terms of the compositions as we have done previously. 
So, I can similarly find the fraction of the beta phase in this eutectic mixture. So, to summarize this slide the important point being that d e d f is an horizontal line this horizontal line can be considered as a lever with fulcrum at e therefore, if I have a liquid completely showing an eutectic reaction I can find the phase fractions using the lever rule and I have to know also note that any liquid which is of the eutectic composition suppose I consider for instance a liquid which is solidified here which is of the eutectic composition or a liquid which is here with this composition however, I have to keep the region between d and f such kind of liquids between d and f will show at least in part the eutectic reaction. So, this is an important point to note before we go and consider some actual some more examples and what will happen if you solidify for instance a eutectic mixture and off eutectic mixture in detail. Let us see some eutectic microstructures as I pointed out when we did the equilibrium phase diagrams that this information of microstructures is typically overlaid on top of phase diagrams to enhance the utility of phase diagrams and we have uh, we should not think that this is a natural product of the phase diagrams. So, let us look at these phases here and we have two examples of eutectic reactions. The one on the right hand side is between a co pure component aluminum of course, a solid solution of aluminum with copper and Al 2 C u. So, it is a one of the components A is a solid solution of aluminum in copper and the other is Al 2 C u a compound. On the left, left hand side is our familiar lead tin lamellar eutectic again noting that when you are saying lead actually what we mean is lead drawn within brackets that means, it is a solid solution which actually shows the eutectic reaction. So, and suppose I have that means, in a two phase I have now a two phase mixture and this type of a microstructure is called a lamellar eutectic of course, all eutectic reactions need not show the lamellar morphology there are other kinds of eutectic like Chinese script eutectic and uh, sometimes sometimes you even get what is known as degenerate eutectics. So, we will not we are not considering examples of those in the in this in this particular slide what we are seeing here is the what you may call the standard lamellar eutectic. Of course, we have to note that these in three dimensions are actually like plates and uh, in three dimension these are plates and we, when you take a metallographic section then you see them as these bands which arise here. So, here for instance in this microstructure you have two bands one dark and one light and if I draw a straight line a uh, composition uh, line across this microstructure and then note the composition I would note that the if you can if you can see here the white is actually a lead rich phase the white phase and the dark phase which is seen here is actually a tin rich phase. So, you have the tin rich phase and the lead rich phase in forming a lamellar eutectic and as I pointed out this is actually in three dimensions there are something like plates and when you take a uh, what you might call the alternating plates and when you take a, a cross section through these alternating plates then you get a microstructure which looks like this. And when you take a composition across these plates you can see that wherever you have the tin rich phase here there is a paucity of lead right. So, there is a lead poor is where the tin rich is and wherever it is lead rich and lead rich we point noted that is the white phase as seen in the micrograph the scanning electron micrograph is where the tin is poor. Therefore, you have this tin rich phase and the lead rich phase which of course, we have already noted are the two terminal solid solutions alpha and beta alpha being the let us go back here to the lead tin diagram alpha being the lead rich phase and beta being the tin rich phase. So, the lead rich phase and the tin rich phase are coexisting in the form of a lamellar eutectic. Similarly, in the micrograph on the right which is an aluminum Al 2 C u lamellar eutectic you note that the dark phase and the white phase coexist one of them is of course, as I you can see here the dark phase is the aluminum phase and the light phase um, is the Al 2 C u intermetallic compound. And since it is an intermediate compound the ideal composition would be consisting of 33 percent of copper and 66 percent of aluminum. So, in this diagram we have taken up some examples of lamellar eutectics noting that there are other kinds of eutectics like Chinese script eutectics which are also possible, but here we have taken the particular example of a lamellar eutectic and we note that that these microstructures are typically overlaid on phase diagrams assuming that we are doing a slow cooling and uh, to enhance the utility of these phase diagrams, but by no means this particular information is a direct product of the phase diagram. 
Now, let us try to correlate the Gibbs free energy composition plots with the eutectic phase diagram. And uh, typically, we would like to start with this what you might call the Gibbs free energy composition plots and uh, maybe theoretically calculated and then try to actually arrive at the eutectic phase diagram. But here, we are just trying to correlate that how does the Gibbs free energy temperature plot look for various temperatures exactly I think the similar way we did for an isomorphous system previously right here. So, we did this for an isomorphous system where we plotted the Gibbs free energy composition diagrams and try to correlate it with the phase diagram. Similarly, we will try to do the same thing for the uh, eutectic system. So, at very high temperatures of course, you have the liquid and the if you draw the Gibbs free energy uh, temperature plot, we will note that the um, liquid line will lie below both the um, alpha line and the beta line. But suppose I start with the interesting part of the diagram which is at T 1. At T 1 you would notice that the alpha phase is the low has a lower value between say the puree and a certain composition here. So, I can mark this composition say as C alpha. Then beyond say C liquid you would notice that the liquid has a lower Gibbs free energy here. So, this is my C alpha and this is my C liquid. So, it has a lower free energy and between the two C alpha and C liquid I have to draw a tie line to construct and that means that there is a coexistence of alpha uh, sorry we have to, I have to make a common tangent construction to show that the alpha and the liquid phases coexist. Throughout this whole composition range you can notice that the beta curve lies above the um, uh, liquid line and therefore, you find that there is no region where the beta is stable. Suppose, I cool down to a lower temperature say to a temperature T 2 then I would notice that there is a regime here on the left hand side wherein the alpha phase is stable in other words still here. Then there is a regime in which the liquid phase is stable that means, the liquid free energy is the lowest. Then to the right there is a temperature uh, composition regime where the beta phase has the lowest Gibbs free energy. So, the role of these three phases uh, the, the region in which these three curves lie at the lowest change keeps switching and to the left here it is the alpha phase which is the lowest then it is a liquid phase in this intermediate compositions and at towards the right is the beta phase. And between any two of the single phase regions you can notice that I can make a common tangent construction by this line and therefore, using these common tangent constructions I can find out that there is liquid plus alpha which is coexisting in the left hand side and liquid plus beta on the right hand side. Of course, at the eutectic temperature also I can draw which is T 3 shown here right here. So, I have a T 3 wherein I see the eutectic reaction and I would notice that I can make a single common tangent construction going through the alpha, the liquid and the beta compositions that means that at this temperature the alpha, the liquid and the beta all three phases can coexist. So, they have a not two common tangent constructions like we had in the temperature T 2 wherein I had to draw a common tangent between for instance the alpha phase and the liquid phase and on the right hand side I had between liquid phase and the beta phase uh, curves, but here I have a single common tangent covering the entire three phases the alpha liquid and beta phases and therefore, at the eutectic temperature all three of them coexist. Now, if you go down to even lower temperatures you would notice that there is an alpha region which is stable here and then there is a beta region which is stable to the right and between the two you can have a co common tangent construction giving us a alpha plus beta region of stability. So, this is trying to correlate the Gibbs free energy composition curves and of course, the most important new thing which we have noted here is the temperature T 3 at which you notice that we can have a single common tangent to three curves three composition Gibbs free energy plots for the alpha liquid and the beta phases and that is an important variation as compared to the isomorphous system. Now, I can visualize this isomorphous system turning into an eutectic system based on the stability of what you might call the strength of the A and B B bonds and also the liquid stability. So, I can start and of course, this is not as if a single system will show all these things a single system of course, will have will either be for instance the diagram 1 here. So, there may be some systems which will look have a phase diagram which looks like 2. 
there may be of course, eight other phase diagram which is the classic eutectic diagram which is the diagram 4. It is unlikely of course, you may land up with a diagram which is um, like 3 which is something just to visualize our what you might call a limiting situation. So, suppose I start with the classic double lens isomorphous system A in 1 as shown and then I assume that there is a depression in melting point as we have seen which also means that there is a phase separation alpha 1 plus alpha 2 at low temperatures here. Now, of course, if you are talking theoretically these might be thought of as the uh, variations in interaction parameters, but we are not going to that detail at this point of time. Uh, we are just trying to get a heuristic or an intuitive feel of how we can go from an what you might call an isomorphous phase diagram to what we might call a eutectic phase diagram with what you might call decreasing uh, solid solubility. So, you may consider a situation where you have a double lens, but then the region of stability of the two phases just almost touches my uh, that means, the moment the liquid is cooled below this congruent transformation temperature it tends to split into alpha 1 and alpha 2. Now, in the, the case 4 which is the eutectic case you can think of this uh, liquid solubility uh, curve extending beyond the eutectic temperature that means, now you for a range of temperatures uh, or for a range of compositions starting from what we had considered here and we had labeled these two range of compositions as D and F. So, you have a D and F here between D and F compositions you notice that uh, the moment the liquid transforms it transforms into a mixture of alpha 1 alpha 2 that means, you never get a pure solid solution like alpha or a unmixed solid solution single disordered solid solution like alpha and therefore, I can now visualize my isomorphous system slowly turning into an eutectic system based on the stabilization of the liquid that means, looking at the two phase mixture which is getting uh, the region of which is getting more and more pronounced and therefore, I can think of an isomorphous system turning into an eutectic system as we go from 1, 2, 3 and 4. Once again to emphasize this does not mean that these all these kind of uh, phase diagrams are obtained from a single system they are all different systems and you may find examples of some of these as you have encountered. Now, let us consider solidification of eutectic and of eutectic compositions. Now, this is um, as I pointed out we would like to enhance the utility of phase diagrams by drawing what we may call the slow cooling curves and these cooling curves are at various compositions. So, when I want to talk about uh, cooling curves <coughs> some representative cooling curves are as shown having a composition C 1 <coughs> which passes through the alpha region the alpha single phase field. Then I have the cooling curve C 2 which is not at the eutectic composition, but is of eutectic. Then I have the C 3 which is also a subscript E to it indicate that it is an actually the eutectic composition which I am solidifying and C 4 which is also an of eutectic composition, but lying to the right of E. The difference of course, between C 4 and C 2 is just the kind of phases which produced and not in the um, uh, they are very similar in terms of the overall solidification which is taking place. Now, in the case of um, you would notice that in all these cases if you talk about a cooled solid C 1, C 2, C 3 E or C 4 I would actually obtain a mixture of alpha plus beta at room temperature. However, the way these phases are distributed are going to be very very different and that is what we are interested in knowing. To reiterate an important point phase diagrams do not contain microstructural information that is they cannot tell you what is the microstructure produced by cooling. Often experimental microstructural information is overlaid on these phase diagrams for convenience and we have to keep the assumptions involved when we are talking about such kind of microstructural informations. Now, if you are talking about a diagram for instance the lead tin eutectic diagram solidification we can consider in three ranges one to the left of C eutectic second between C eutectic and C E and third 
at C. So, these are three important ranges we need to talk about that is to the left of D between D and E and at E these are three important ranges and of course, to the right hand side you can clearly see it is just nothing but everything wherever there was an alpha now it will become beta. Now, if you are talking about an eutectic composition and that means, now the C 3 which is the simplest to consider now and you are cooling along this line here so at from high temperature to low temperature. We will note that the entire solidification will take place at a single temperature T e and you would what we had seen before in the example that we will produce a lamellar kind of a eutectic in typical cases like in the case of the lead tin eutectic and this eutectic microstructure will look something like as shown in the diagram on the right. So, here we have the lamellar eutectic produced when we take a eutectic composition and solidify that means, now at high temperatures till we have liquid region and at temperature T e what happens is that the liquid which is present solidifies at a single temperature producing both the micro constituents alpha and beta and typically this happens in a way said that suppose I can consider for instance that in a certain region you have the say the beta phase being produced next to it is an region which is deprived in component B and therefore, you will have the alpha phase suppose this is my alpha uh, beta phase coming out then you will have the alpha phase then you will have a beta phase coming out then there will be an alpha phase and so forth such that the overall composition is as given by the uh, lever rule construction at the eutectic temperature and that is what we note as the eutectic composition. Now, suppose I take a composition which is for instance to the left of the eutectic composition like C 2 or C 4 which is to the right of the eutectic composition an important point to note would be that between temperature for instance suppose I am considering C 2 initially of course, there will be liquid at high temperatures then between temperatures which is marked by labels 2 a and 2 b you will have the alpha phase coming out of the liquid. This alpha phase is called the pro eutectic, pro -eutectic phase uh, which is indicative of the fact that this is actually a pre eutectic phase. So, this is called the pro eutectic, but it what is actually implied it is the pre eutectic phase. So, this pre eutectic phase is called pro eutectic phase and this comes out from the liquid, but um, in the temperature regime labeled by 2 a and 2 b. Now, we had already noted that when we have when we did the isomorphous phase diagram that as you are cooling from the point to label 2 a to 2 b what will happen to the composition of the liquid the liquid will move along this line the composition of the liquid and the composition of the solid will move along this line. So, let us examine this fact a little more in the table. So, I have a portion of my eutectic phase diagram wherein of course, I have the component B here pure component A here I have my liquidus line here which is say for for instance T m A to E point E and maybe I can call this point A if you want and then I have the uh, solidus line here and of course, I have the solvus line from D to this point here x. Now, what I want to consider is the solidification of a composition which is labeled as C 0. Above this label 2 a which is occurs at a temperature 2 a I find that it is entirely liquid. Now, at low temperatures we know finally, we will get an alpha plus beta mixture between 2 a and 2 b I would note that I should get what is called a precipitation or a formation of alpha from the liquid. So, initially I have a liquid mixture here and from this I will have the alpha phase coming out. And this alpha is called the pro eutectic alpha.
Now, the important point to note is that as this alpha is coming out, this alpha which is coming out at any temperature for instance suppose I have here, I draw a temperature line here in between. So, the liquid in composition with an alpha say at a temperature T 3, the alpha's composition is changing. Similarly, the liquid composition also changing as we are going down from 2 A to 2 B point. The composition of the alpha as we have noted before would go along the solidus line from this point which I say for instance call it M to D and the composition of the liquid will go along this line which I call from 2 A to E. So, this is my composition of the liquid as you are cooling and this is my composition of the alpha phase as I am cooling. So, the composition of the liquid and alpha which is in equilibrium with it is constantly changing. That means, if I talk about the first alpha which came out at this temperature 2 A, its composition would be different. Suppose, it started with a small amount of then it grew a little more, but then this larger alpha would have a different composition com which would be richer in B, then it grew even further then I or more of this alpha form then its composition would change with respect to what was the original alpha which came out. So, the alpha is constantly changing. Now, this and the fact that the liquid is now uh, getting richer and richer in B and when you reach this temperature for instance the T eutectic temperature suppose I now consider this is my snapshot at T eutectic is my snapshot at T eutectic where a certain amount of alpha has already come out from the liquid. Now, what is the composition of the liquid? The composition of liquid is not the original nominal composition C 0, but is actually the composition which is C eutectic, because now the liquid has traversed along this line and therefore, has reached this point E. And now that implies that the solidification of the remaining liquid here is going to take place as if now the liquid is an eutectic liquid and therefore, I would get an eutectic kind of a micro constituent and that will look like this. So, I will have a alternating lamellae of so this is my alpha and now you have an alternating lamellae of alpha and beta. So, suppose I have my uh, beta which is say for instance I label it in yellow color. So, this will be my beta in between the alphas. So, this is my beta. So, the final solidified microstructure will have an eutectic component which is consisting of alpha and beta lamellae, but also have the pro eutectic alpha. That means, alpha is present in two places as these big what we call approximately spherical lumps and section looking uh, circular the alpha and the alpha present in the eutectic mixture. So, this is an important point to note that when you are doing a solidification of an off eutectic composition like C 0 here that the composition of the solid and liquid is constantly changing as we noted for the isomorphous system and the liquid composition when you reach this temperature T e has reached this point E and that implies that that liquid is ready to undergo eutectic transformation and we already know that the eutectic transformation will produce alternating lamellae of alpha and beta phases and the end product microstructure will consist of an pro eutectic alpha and also a eutectic mixture consisting of alpha plus beta. So, that is what is schematically shown in the diagram here which is the diagram shown at the bottom. Now, suppose I take a mirror reflection composition of this of course, I do not mean a real mirror I mean a mirror conceptual mirror wherein instead of working with C 2 composition I work with a C 4 composition. The only difference I would see compared to this uh, diagram would be that the microstructure would be that I would get pro eutectic beta coming out for this composition between these labels for instance I consider say 4 A and 4 B between 4 A and 4 B temperatures I would get what you might call pro eutectic beta coming out. The composition of the liquid will travel along this line and reach E and therefore, at 
T eutectic, I would get the standard eutectic microstructure. And therefore, the only difference would be that the pro eutectic phase instead of the alpha phase would be the beta phase. Now, we also need to talk about um, an composition which does not lie in the section of between D and F. So, at E we already seen it is a eutectic micro constituent I would produce between D and E or E and F I would get a pro eutectic component first coming out followed by an eutectic solidification, but suppose I take a composition to the left of D for instance a composition like C 1. So, what would happen to such a composition let us try to understand. So, above the point labeled 1 A I would notice that I have the liquid phase between 1 A and 2 B I would expect that the alpha phase starts to come out and slowly as you go down to lower and lower temperature I would notice that the fraction of the alpha would increase because now I can construct what am I call a tie line at any temperature in this regime and I know I have to have my fulcrum here and therefore, you can see that this arm of the lever is if it suppose you draw a fulcrum at higher temperature you would notice that this arm of the lever is small, but then this arm of the lever increases as you go down to lower and lower temperatures. And like in the case of an isomorphous system once I cross this temperature 1 B below that I go I get a pure alpha phase. So, this is similar so far to an isomorphous system in which case you start with the liquid and then land up with a pure alpha phase at lower temperatures. So, this is very very similar to an isomorphous system, but this system is not completely uh, what you call uh, um, done with yet because at even lower temperatures you intersect the point 1 C at 1 C you notice that the solubility of the alpha phase has fallen that means uh, to be more precise the solubility of B in A is falling along the sloping solvus line as we had pointed out the D A curve. And because of the sloping solvus line when the cooling curve intersects this point 1 C you would expect that the beta phase would precipitate out from the alpha phase. So, initially you at high temperatures you had liquid then when you at 1 B for instance. So, at 1 B you could have a picture something like this wherein or just above 1 B. So, this is slightly above 1 B. So, you would notice that there is alpha phase and the liquid phase in coexistence with it and when you cross the 1 B line and get into a phase to feel between 1 B and 1 C and just above 1 C you would notice that the entire alpha would look like this. That means, there is a polycrystalline alpha and these can be considered as grain boundaries. Now, when you go down below 1 C then you would notice that the second phase beta would try to prestate out from the alpha because there is a sloping solvus line and of course, given the composition I can find out at any temperature for instance I can draw a line like this horizontal line of course, not looking too good on, on this, but this is my fulcrum and now the amount of beta phase is proportional to the small arm of the lever that means, a small amount of beta would have prestate out and of course, the composition of the beta would travel along this line here which I can draw. So, the composition of the beta would travel along this line and the composition of the alpha would travel correspondingly on the other line the corresponding line on the right hand side and the end micro structure would be consisting of alpha essentially alpha phase, but then there will also be beta phase. Uh, in this schematic I have shown two kinds of beta phases one which is heterogeneously nucleated at the green boundary and the others which is nucleated homogeneously at all inside the grains. Um, these terms heterogeneous and homogeneous nucleation we will consider in detail in the chapter on phase transformations, but for now we will note that if there is some aid to the phase transformation the nucleation part of the phase transformation then for instance the form of grain boundaries or dislocations then such a thing is called heterogeneous nucleation. The other of course, occurring uniformly over the material is called homogeneous nucleation, but essentially we note that the beta phase can be present along the grain boundaries maybe even along the triple junctions or triple lines here or they could be present within the grains of alpha. So, you have the final micro constituent which consists of the alpha phase which came out between the temperatures one labeled with 1 B and 1 C and also the beta phase which came out from below the 1 C temperature. So, this is the brief summary of the what you might call the uh, solidification sequence when we consider what you may call eutectic compositions of eutectic compositions showing eutectic reactions 
and of eutectic compositions which are beyond the DF region of the um, phase diagram and therefore, they are producing a two phase mixture which does not have any eutectic component in it. Before we leave this topic, let us consider some special eutectic diagrams. Okay. Uh, like we pointed out a typical eutectic phase diagram is like the one we have seen so far which is like this lead tin eutectic and the right hand bottom shows such a similar diagram for the silver copper in which case silver and copper both are FCC, but then they do not have complete solid solubility in each other and therefore, I have a eutectic phase diagram and this is standard kind of phase diagrams which we have been seeing so far, but I could also have <coughs> phase diagrams in which case like for instance the silver germanium system, silver is FCC, German germanium is diamond cubic and you notice that practically no amount of silver dissolves in germanium. So, there is no terminal solid solubility on the germanium side. However, on the silver side I can see that there is some amount of terminal solid solubility. Okay. So, on the germanium side there is no terminal solid solubility. So, we have no practically no terminal solid solubility on the right hand side, while uh, on the left hand side the silver side there is some amount of germanium does dissolve in silver. Now, but if you look at the bismuth cadmium system you would notice that there is practically no terminal solid solubility either on the bismuth side or on the cadmium side and therefore, this system uh, has no terminal solid solubility and therefore, if I want to label the two phase fields I will have to label it as liquid plus bismuth here and I will have to label it as liquid plus cadmium here and this is not an alpha plus beta mixture in this region. In this region I will have to label it as bismuth plus cadmium and in this case of course, I will have the alpha solid solution of silver which I could label as either A g like this or as alpha. So, I will have alpha plus germanium here. In this case of course, if I label this alpha and I label this beta then I would have an alpha plus beta mixture. So, often um, when phase diagrams like the one of bismuth cadmium are drawn uh, students get a little confused that how come there is no terminal solid solubility this is because uh, and how do I label the phases. So, you have to note that this phase is now liquid plus beta on the right hand side is liquid plus cadmium and the two phase field the solid field is bismuth plus cadmium. 